Hey, y'all, Clem Hawkins back. I had a thought, but then I stopped to do something and I forgot what I was doing. So I'm thinking about the concept of this podcast. This morning I was thinking about Snap, bang, pop. So I was thinking about this uh, podcast. I was th- I'm thinking about the limitations and how we can avoid or overcome or not accept the limitations. And I'm thinking out loud that my limitations are time and money. Because it takes money and time to upload these things. Uh, Not to mention the extra time it takes to record them, to edit them, to process them. And I do as little of that as possible. To be real honest, my YouTube channel is more my uh, studio than it is my presentation board. I'd apologize for that, but, you know, if you got a problem with it, fuck you. Because that's all I got. You can uh, YouTube me or PayPal me a, a fucking iPad or iMac or whatever this shit I need to be better. But the fact that I can do it with nothing is probably important, more important. almost said important. Or it's probably more important than uh, being having all of the fancy equipment and the... Uh, massive studio what just happened oh my music quit or my speaker disconnected because the music quit um so yeah uh some of this goes with residentially challenged some of it doesn't i'm going to share with you this cool little thing it is a bluetooth speaker that i got for free well i got it by because i was working security at this thing and i got to go to the MBA Association Festival thing, and they had all kinds of free shit. So I got a couple of those. Not sure why. I was like, I might need those in the future. And the fact that I can sit here and listen to music with this cool-ass little speaker, plus when I'm working, I can carry the speaker around with me, and I can share my music with others, or they can hear it, but it's not too annoying because it's very small. It's a little bitty dilly. Um, And I have this taped onto a lanyard so I can wear it around my neck or hang it from my uh, camera mount rear view mirrors position. Um, Which is kind of funny that that becomes the perfect position. If I had not gotten mad that one day and yanked that shit down off of my rear view mirror with the rear view mirror with it, eliminating my rear view mirror, had I not had a, a patched up window, you could see clear through the window tinted window at it at that is uh but th- when i got here to denver that was broke out because when i was four we went a, tr- a tree limb branch hit it uh and it shattered so i had to had it plasticed over so i spent a lot of time driving and not having a rear view mirror i got these little uh fish eye mirrors on the side mirror so i can see as much as i can as possible but i'm not missing the rear view mirror and since it was not there you have a place to sit so um, that's an interesting coincidence. I like how plans have come together, like the A-team and stuff. Um, yeah, sitting here looking at dicks. Uh, there's a soccer field. That's a, okay, there's this big-ass field, nat- the, the perimeter of the nature preserve. God willing, it stays nature. It's not gonna. I'm sure of it. Monkeys always, uh, they get all antsy and they have to build shit instead of fixing it so stupid but you know we need bar bubble space got to spread out everybody's got to have the biggest bubble on the planet and the ones with the big bubbles are usually the smallest bubble bubbles you see what i'm saying it's like it takes tiny bubbles to make a big bubble out here but if you got a big bubble in here all you deal out here with is tiny bubbles And that's part of the list exit conundrum that I deal with on a daily, or on a, 
I just deal with it. Uh, dyslexic or listexic, tomato, tomato, frontwards or back asswards, downside up or right side in, uh, whatever it is. I think you catch my drift. But I got to talking about those uh, going to the library and taking a page so you didn't have to go to the library every day. How how many lifetimes, how big of a book would it take for a lifetime of supply? Um, I'm wondering if a letter print in 12 point, which is usually what first comes up on word processors. So, and I'm assuming that certain sized fonts are required in publication or copy material. Uh, matter of fact, I'm just, I know, I think it's 12, but some of it might be 10, I'm not sure. Point of it is that's the size of the letter. If one letter is one centimeter squared, that would be equal to one dose. Um, at least in an ideal situation. Uh, Gives a whole new meaning to the song Paperback Writer when you have that awareness in your head. Um, I'm thinking about the squeaky wheel getting the grease and me being happy to not have ever been squeaky because I didn't get greased. And I'm thinking about the what gets a hippie bus captain out of any jam. Uh, a can of liquid wrench and the phrase your shoes untied. I was taught that by a Oregonian rambling type of fella, hippie captain. And I suppose they're out there. We're out there. More ways than one, we're out here. We're out here on the wilderness, living on the edge, reporting back letters from the edge. I could only imagine. Granted, he was, I think, more, way more social. He was more popular, he being Hunter S. Thompson. You can just tell by the look on his face when he was a young kid and all the way through it and watching the documentaries that he, more than I, was a big, he's more into the attention. I'm kind of opposite in that manner, although I'm comfortable with it or have been to this point. Yet when I'm not comfortable with it, I'm here I sit lying to myself. I'm a hippie critic. Uh, I came out here to be away from people. <laughs> so, yeah, of course I get along with people as long as I'm a long way off from them. Like the best part about Texas is it's way over there. Um, and I imagine if that girl was right, you know, she could have been that. It doesn't take more than three uh, drinking sessions with me to hear all my stories. But the fact that I'm unable, unwilling, and financially in uh, no position to sit at the Starbucks for six to eight hours just to upload an hour's worth of these podcasts. If I can keep them to a minimum... Although when I sit and talk, uh, that's something like, I guess I could uh, time lapse, but I would sound like fucking Annie Mouse. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier, is doing my own video casts and getting a Minnie Mouse hat, like a Minnie Mouse hat, so it looks like Dead Mouse, but make it a mini mouse instead of, de but it's not mini mouse. It's uh, Annie mouse. Cause I was thinking about podcasts and revolution stuff and anonymity and getting an anonymous mask and typing this shit in and then letting a computer read it. So you never heard my voice and you'd wonder if it was a machine putting it out there to make you think it was a human. So you wouldn't believe it. And then there's all of that silliness. But I'm looking across this field. And there's this big American flag. 
like an old west outpost, understand that right behind me is the land where the buffalo roam. This is the buffalo park, what I call the buffalo park. Um, the natural preserve of some sort. So there's buffalo. We talked about the hawk earlier. I've seen a bald eagle. I see prairie dogs. I call them uh, groundhogs the other just a minute ago, but they're uh, prairie dogs, which is the community of family, I suppose, although I also understand they can be pretty vicious. But I'm looking across, and there's this big soccer arena, Dick's Sporting Goods Park. And then over to my left is this huge... i got to just turn the thing. Pull this on. I gotta push the button to release the deal. So, if you can see all the way over there, there's a whole bunch of houses. Those weren't there a year ago. Or a year ago, the ones, see the, all the super duper flags, like the bunches of them over there on the right, far right, I think. That's where it began or whether where it started. Those one houses might have been there or they were just being built. Okay, so within a year, this outpost has developed. That is an outpost that is only allowed, or where only certain people are permitted because of the cost. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like that movie In Time. Uh, as long as they can tr control the rate in which you earn money, they control the lifestyle that you can afford. So certain people get that, other people get this. I'm not sure with the exception of some sort of overnight fame or popularity that I would ever be able to afford that. And if I could, I'd be more of the mind to buy one of those properties. I heard about this guy in the 60s did this, or 70s. He basically got his went to a subdivision like that, tore down the house and put up a big teepee and lived like a native in front of all of these white people. And he wasn't necessarily an Indian, if you follow. He was just somebody saying something. But, of course, like idiots do, A, they surround themselves with other idiots, and B, they have a tendency of telling smart people to shut the fuck up because idiots are dumb like that. Well, and they're not dumb like that. They want geniuses to be dumb like that. So, uh... It's kind of difficult to put it out into words, except I'm thinking about Tesla and how he isolated himself and how I never considered myself a Tesla type of person uh, with that level of mental capacity. However, I have seen in my life that I am inclined to behaviors that are similar to those of higher intelligence and one's thinking further ahead. And I'm not saying I belong in their, on their bus, but I'm at least at the same festival or something like that. Same tour, different bus. Same bus, different tour. You can probably hear Mr. Panty Pants back there. He always does that when he's whining. That's his quiet way of whining. It's like, oh, why am so... Isn't it better to be warm than cold, though? It was fucking cold last night, dude. Let's enjoy being warm. So, back to the limitations and the ideas. I just caught myself over-talking. It's 14... Oh nine, so I'm doing what I can to keep these to 20 minutes. Although my iriness and my message at the time, message of the moment, may last longer than 20 minutes. In which case, I'll just upload them as part one and part two. Yesterday, I remember going to McDonald's to upload a 20-minute video. It said 40 minutes that tells me that that's like 500k I think uh, that's a little nerdy over my head right now my head's not on that nerd um, 
But if it takes 40 minutes per phone or per file, per 20 minute file, that means that I can upload three in an hour, assuming from th three different sources, assuming that they're all connected to an internet that's reliable, unlike the Star Fox this morning. Fucking, I probably reset my phones and laptops five or six times just to keep connections. And I wasn't flooding the fucking network. This was early when there was nobody else fucking hardly there. You see what I'm saying? So I can't imagine anyone else using the internet except me and my six phones. And only four or five of them were connected to the internet with the laptop. So I might have only had five total connections at one time. Which is kind of like the Google YouTube thing. It allows me to edit five uh, videos at a time. And that seems to be going really well. I'm not thrilled about having to put other people's music to it. I'm not at all interested in monetizing it, uh, but maybe I should. And I can't monetize it for myself without an address, it seems. And I still don't have one of those. And I really got to get that fucking fixed, like, sooner than later. Having used the, the previous uh, address that's now... Uh, considered evicted and you can't anything I mail there that gets sent back but if I do a mail forwarding thing all of those yellow stickers go to the next address instead of that one which is kind of cool because that means I'll finally be in the whole big loop of things granted I've had six different mailboxes over the past 10 years uh, or less Elvis you're 12 so 10 yeah, I guess that's right. Ten years ago is when I got my first mailing address in uh, Santa Fe, no, Tosuki, uh Post Office. Or no, maybe the, maybe I, I did, might have got one downtown for a minute. Maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe I didn't. So, Tosuki, uh, Medinalis, Abiquiu, Moab... Telluride, Durango, Cape Girardeau, and here is my paper trail. And there's not one here yet. But if I got one here, I could maybe get all those other ones to send to here. I'm aware that I still have uh, important need to pay attention to uh, dues or uh, past debts, 265 or $280 to Cape Girardeau, basically. And if I could do it right, 160 to Limousine Company and 60 or 80 to that other kid. Um, those two companies gave me money in advance for parts that I wasn't able to get or that I went and looked for. And I could find that one kid's part, but I didn't have enough with the change left over from the three times looking other places. But by that time, I really had no interest in changing a rack and pinion steering under a fucking kid from Texas's vehicle. And mostly because he lied to me. He said, well... He said he drove over a pothole, but the way that, that you couldn't, the only way you could do that damage if you were hauling ass and you fucking slid sideways into a curb and you tried to smith grind the curb with your car wheel. That's more likely what fucking happened. And in honest sense, both of them, I lost numbers because I lost the one phone, then I lost the other phone. And then that kid called and I had his, and I'm like, yeah, I'll call you. And that the next day I found the part and I couldn't figure out his number and I went through my all my return calls and couldn't find him so I let it be but the other day I was at front of McDonald's and it was kind of by where that kid lived and it I came up to mine and I'd rather have that be paid off than to have to think about it again and again and again and again um, but yeah if an outpost like that I'm sure you could figure out how many people it could represent or hold <laughs> what its actual cost to build out was. Um, you could duplicate it in other places for people at a much smaller 
cost. The tiny homes would have a much lower profile, but it'd be more spread out, you'd think. But even if you had a tiny home for every room that you needed to have, a bedroom, a bathroom, and shower, a uh, laundry room, and a kitchen, bedroom, living room, study, office, kitchen, laundry room, bedroom, shower, bath. That's five of those tiny houses. That's 20 by 50. 100 square, 100 square feet. Um, no, 20 by 50 is 1,000 square feet. Yeah, 2 times 5 is 10, but 2 zeros is 1,000. And that's a lot of space. Um, a geodesic dome that's eight foot tall and eight foot around, pi r squared, 3.14159265359. So pi times the radius squared, if it's eight foot tall and eight foot around, it's four foot. So 4 times 4 is 16 times 3.14, 16, 32, 48. That's about 500 square feet, I think. So a 16-foot tall dome would be 100 square feet. Do you see my math? Then you have a 16-foot circle with a 12, 20 foot square. So the math that I did in that field the other day that may or may not ever got up on the YouTube about the tiny houses and I, I counted off the footage of this field and I was counting as if I was counting, uh, I was counting incorrectly. I was going one, two, three, four, five, thinking that that was 10 feet when in actuality my steps are not two feet long. They're probably more like five or six feet long. So 5 times 5 is 25, 6 is 30 for like odd measurement. And, and across half the field, I measured out enough space that you could put 200, that you'd have 200 of these 20 by 20 or 25 or 30 foot by 30 foot squares, thinking that each square would have one tiny house on it. But a tiny house is like 4 by 8 or or eight by 16 at best, two, two plywoods, four, four plywood sheets, big. Um, that's big for those tiny houses, I think. Um, eight by eight would make a square. 12 by eight would be three sheets sideways. Um, that's probably the most realistic. Uh, plus three is a magic number, I like that. Regardless with the domes, a 16-foot tall, 16-foot around dome would be 16 squared. That's 136 times 3. 150 would be 450. So it's 500 square feet. Um, considering all of the living areas are shared with heat in the middle, living space and bedroom and sleeping space would be would make sense if that was part of that, but that each piece of the pie dividing that thing into say five parts or four parts, say four parts, easy and simple. You got a bed and a bath on one side, you got a kitchen and eating space, you have a second living space and a third living space. Or you have a bed, bath, and beyond. Maybe you have three. Um, all of that, the tiny houses could be built on wheels. That could be mobile. 
a 16 foot dome around you couldn't put it on wheels because that's almost two lanes of traffic uh, tiny houses you could put them in a row one two three on a semi truck or side to side semi truck and you could probably put 10 of them on one semi truck or more uh, the other day that tiny house place I saw uh, got foreclosed on long and the short of it I guess it was a pilot project that only lasted six months because it was basically the owners trying to do something good with it while wait, they waited for the loan for the money to build the building that they're going to later charge people rent for welcome to Monopoly a game that was designed in the during the depression to teach people how horrible corporate stuff was and they the system flipped that shit around and now people play that game in real life thinking that that's the whole purpose of it Elvis is coughing at me like he needs water I'm at 26 minutes which is over my 20 minute limit mark so I might go to 30 um, if I could just get you water you'd be okay with that how about I do that hold on a sec So this is about stupid. I got this thing down here. You can't see it because of the light. Um, it's a it's a seat protector for uh, animals. It's called. And when I drove the tow truck last year, I had Elvis and Harley. And Harley, having that undercoat of a Jack Russell, had all these teeny tiny white hairs. And they were coated to the seat. And the boss is like, oh, by the way, this year, no dog. Because it was ruining my seat. So the first shift, I did take Elvis with me. But immediately afterwards, I brushed the seat. Then I got, like, uh, gaffer's tape and used that to pull as many hairs out. And said, oh, the seat's clean. He's like, awesome, awesome. So being in preparation for future shifts and possibly if I ever had to, I hardly ever even see him. I just work and then he gives me a call and I show up to his house and I get my check my envelope from a milk crate or something so I bought that thing for the dog so the seat would be protected plus I'm occasionally in and out um, I was looking at the tag and it says spot clean only don't wash don't launder don't bleach don't dry clean don't heat dry which, and I did launder it and I did heat dry it. And it was kind of, the plasticky stuff was kind of shrunk funky, but it went back into reasonably decent shape. I didn't overdo it, hopefully. Um, and that puts us at 29 minutes and 20 seconds. So how about we get out of here, uh, figure out the rest of your day, figure out the rest of my day. And in 31 or so seconds, we'll talk at you soon. This would be a good time if I had theme music. We'd like to start the theme music and sponsors. And uh, to Plain Label Ginger Ale for 84 cents, you too can have whiskey gingers. Oh, and speaking of whiskey gingers, if you buy two, if you buy a half pint, it's almost seven bucks. If you buy two doubles, it's only four bucks. Save three dollars. 
Peace. Love you, Jerry.